Well friends, this is a Toon Shaded animation. I currently enjoy the Toon Shader, which came with Arnold 5.1 quite a bit. It's a nicely modeled character, which I got from Turbo Squid for free actually. And he came with a nice skeleton, which I didn't use, I deleted it. And instead I fed him with another skeleton from another motion capture animation which I got also from Turbo Squid, a falling creature. That's the one you see here. Okay, let's stop this and I show you the scene and basically I want to show you something about visualize but uh, let's just briefly talk about the scene here. The character is here and uh, here I have uh, a quick rig character that's actually this creature here and I fed him with um, an animation from another skeleton uh, without geometry actually which is called humanoid one and uh, you can see it right here I unhide it so that's the skeleton which is the master of that character now what I'll do is I'll show you several things with this skeleton here. So let me hide the character and let's stick to that skeleton. First of all, Visualize has Create Editable Motion Trail as an option, Create a Turntable and then a couple of things about ghosting. Let's start with ghosting. Uh, if you want to ghost something uh, you will see the trail of their animation uh, as a well as a ghost thing so let's pick this skeleton and then go to visualize and ghost select it and you already see that there's something going on here basically the ghosting shows you the geometry or in this case the skeleton before and after the actual animation. So if we stop here, that's when the creature falls. You get an impression about how it falls. The green outline here, let me change the background color. The green outline is, um, is the current skeleton at frame 73. And the blue ones are the, uh, the ones in, in the frames before. And the pink ones are the uh, motions ahead so you can actually see is this motion okay yes it is uh, it's pretty sure it's okay because it's a motion capture uh, figure here and is this okay and you see very nicely here that the foot the tip the, the, the toes actually uh, sit on the ground while he falls they don't slip so they just they are planted here which is typical for a falling uh, creature actually it's typical for a walking creature because we need to um, we need to plant a foot in order to not slide on a surface if it's winter and you have a, a frozen lake it's different but normal walking and falling goes like this so this is an excellent way to visualize these things and in the attribute editor you can change the um, the ghosting settings anyway so now we can unghost this thing so we don't see the ghosting anymore go to visualize and I think it's quite practical to unghost all so that's the skeleton we have now let's uh, use this command again this time with the option box so we have the skeleton selected we go to visualize and we ghost select it with the option box and here in the option box we see we can use the global preferences which are set in the render uh, settings but you can also say frames to display is 1, 10, 10, 20 and say 40 and we apply this and then we see uh, a more stepwise ghosting so that's frame 1 that's frame 10, that's 20 and that's 40 so you can visualize a lot of things really so let me reset this close the menu and go to visualize and unghost all 
So the next thing I want to show you is pretty similar. It's called editable motion trail. So with the skeleton selected, let's create a motion trail. The motion trail is here in the outliner. It's called motion trail handle. Uh, it's basically just a, just a visualization of the of the motion. So I think now I need to go back to uh, this kind of view here. And you see that line, which is the line, the trail of the hip of this figure, of this character. And the red parts, trail color here, uh, are the ones which are behind in the past, so to say. And this is the future. And here, of course, you see an interesting turn. That's when the character hits the ground and briefly bounces back. You see that in a minute. Whoops! This little, this tiny mo movement, this one, is the kind of curve you see here. And uh, this part here indicates that there's something bad happening because this is quite continuous, like the hips going slightly up and down and slightly to the left and right, which is typical for a straight walk. But here uh, something bad happens. And that's, of course, the point where our character stumbles and falls. You can pick, say, the foot and go to Visualize and create an editable motion trail. So that's the motion of the foot now next to the motion of the hip. Let's uh, see what the head does. Visualize, create editable motion trail. Of course, we can edit it later and change the animation. So the head is quite stable. The head keeps quite stable even when the legs are already falling. But then uh, even the head makes that curve, which is basically the same motion as the hip does with this little bounce here. So let's check this. So this is the head. You see the red part is the past and this is the future and now the head bounces as well. So if you're not sure does the head bounce or not, um, you see it exactly in this um, visualization here. If you want to get rid of the motion trails just select them, the handles here in the outliner and delete them so they're gone. In the visualize menu we find the turntable which I've used in past tutorials quite a bit. Uh, let's just uh, talk about the turntable before we leave this tutorial. When you select that character here, we select it here, the skeleton, and then you go to visualize and then you should use the option box because the turntable options are set to a default number of frames of 24 which is very short, only one second. It should actually consider the timeline of our animation, but I think that will be fixed in future uh, versions of Maya. Currently, you have to type in the frame amount you, you want to have for the turntable camera. So uh, 140 frames in my case. I want the camera to rotate around that character by 360 degrees, so a, a whole circle. And you can do it counterclockwise or clockwise and I apply it and I look through the turntable camera now. Of course it loses the character out of sight because it kind of makes a compromise. It looks in the center and to the center of the scene currently. It doesn't follow the character. It's just a pure rotation. Uh, let's undo this. And when I keep this distance for example the visualization for the turntable respects the distance. So let's go here again, 140 frames, and apply it and close it. So the turntable will keep that distance and rotate around the character. So it respects the distance I have in the view when I create the turntable camera. Want to see the rendering again? Yeah. Have a nice day. Have a nice evening. Have a nice afternoon or have nice breakfast.